Hello, I am so excited. Elaine Williams here with Still Human with my fabulous, amazing co-host, Kathy Keegan. And we have the most delicious guest for you today. But I just wanted to do a quick intro. If you're new to us, we're so excited that you're here. You know, we wanted to start a podcast for all the things we wish we had known five, 10 years ago. We were in these, both of us were in these crazy big masterminds and there were lots of things that we sh wish we had known that we didn't know. And we wanted to help spread the word so that women especially would not internalize all the stuff that happens, that happens in business and life. So that's, that was what one of the reasons I had to start feel human. Easy for me to say, I can't talk to you. This is my rented tongue. <laughs> So anyway, so um, <laughs> without further ado, I want to tell you about our amazing and beautiful uh, guest today, Melinda Holmes. She is a customer experience extraordinaire expert. She has done so many different things. She's a badass coach, an amazing um, woman in business, and we are so delighted to have her on our show. And welcome, Melinda. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elaine, for that beautiful introduction. Thank you. I, I didn't pay her. You. <laughs> the check's in the mail, thank right? You. No. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here, Elaine and Kathy. I'm, I'm having a wonderful time already. I'm just happy to be here. Oh, good. Thanks. Well, we're so happy. <laughs> you know, Kathy Keegan and I, we met through eWomen and we started working together and we just kept laughing. I was helping her with her stories and we just kept laughing and we were like, I think this is supposed to be a podcast. And we love to laugh and, and, um, you know, Kathy's mission is to end needless workplace suffering, mm. which I just love. And as someone who works for myself and sometimes my boss is horrible, horrible. <laughs> Kathy talks me mm. off the ledge. I'll call her. Do you have a minute? And she's just <laughs> so good at helping reframe. And then mm -hmm. when I met you, Melinda, some of the things you said, I was like, oh my God, we have to have her on the show. Kathy's going to love you. So we, can you tell us a little bit about your philosophy, how you got to where you are? Right, right. Well, <laughs> well, I, it all started back in, co well, after college, right? I, I went to school for IT. So I thought I was going to graduate as a, as a, getting a job in information technology. Uh, but unfortunately, um, you know, it's unfortunate that the, the, the Senior year, my senior year was the year that 9-11 happened. So it was very, very sad, unfortunate time. And everything changed. As you know, the economy changed. Uh, you know, it was tough seeing friends and, and family, what they may have been going through. And it was just a tough time. So graduating wasn't what I expected as far as, like, jobs. But I said, I have to get a job, right? You have your auto, you have your car loan, you have your, your school loan. <laughs> so I said, I have to get a job. So I, I found the management trainee program for a large insurance company. And actually it was um, Geico. And I said, okay, management program. This is great, I could start, be a manager. And it was for their customer service department. But what I didn't realize is that although you're starting as a management trainee, you have to start from the ground up. So I started as a customer service representative in their customer service insurance agent department. And I learned at a very young age that you have to know how to do it yourself and in order to really train and lead, you have to have that hands-on experience. So I spoke with, with policyholders, and I had to show that I knew what I knew what I was doing in order to even get promoted. And during that time, as becoming a customer service representative and, and speaking with so many policyholders and having so many scenarios, I learned about adding value to what policyholders already have, letting them know, hey, you're missing out on this. Let me let you know what you're missing out on, what, why this is a value for you, how this could help you and save you money down the line. And also learning how to, how to just go above and beyond. So it's not just providing that service. So I ended up, you know, I thought, oh, after this, I'll probably go back into IT. But I ended up finding a love for helping people. And even once becoming promoted, being able to coach and help other staff members be able to get that patience and find that sweet spot where they can really learn how to connect with the customers. And it's not like, oh gosh, here's another angry customer, here's another irate customer. You know, it's like, how can you connect with them and paint a picture and turn this not so happy call, if, if that's the case, into a great experience where they're like, you know what, I was going to cancel, but because I spoke with you, I'm going to stay. <laughs> so I, I grew a love for that and, uh, and and just had really that, that just that natch of, of doing it. And 
And just throughout my life, I just always wanted to have a business. And then the last position I took as the, as an engagement manager, I learned customer service on a whole nother level. So it wasn't just providing like a transactional service where it's just like, hi, how are you? Have a great day. But it was, how do you engage with, with your clientele? How do you take it to another level where you create an experience? So you create a community and it's not just, oh, this is my customer, but you create a community where you have a customer for life because you created that bond with them. And so I, I said, wow, this is awesome. And then I just decided like, just deciding what I wanted to do, what type of business. I struggled for a few years deciding what type of business do I want to start because I want to make sure it's meaningful. I want to make sure it, I feel like I'm really there to help them and have the ability to help them. And I just noticed a lot of small businesses had great talent. They offered something great, whether it was food or cake or, you know, arts, whatever it may be. It was like, these. this is just such great talent. But I was like, there's just something missing. I was like, they could be a whole, take their business to a whole nother level, earn a lot more and even have customers come back and come back and increase their chances of succeeding by just implementing this customer experience, this mm. customer engagement. So I said, this is, this is what, this is it. <laughs> and I knew it was going to be a, hard, a lot of hard work. I know it wasn't going to be easy, but, I, and this is like my third business venture. So I said, this is, <laughs> I said, this is, this is it. This is, this is what I, I feel is my calling. And I want to help these small businesses take it to the next level. I love so it. I, with, I'm with like, implementing the experience. I'm like, did you say cake? I love oh, cake. And I, so and it, I, she said cake, but she be, said she said things like food and cake. Oh. And so cake <laughs> is in a, a class by itself. And I, I, I didn't realize I said that. It I is, but, love um, what you're talking about. Yes. I used to be a cake deck. That was one of my business ventures. I, I started, uh, took Wilton cake decorating classes and I decorated cakes and I did cake pops and I was in love with it. And it was, it, it was great, but it was a lot of work. So yeah. Lot of work. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, so many things I, you know, can you help me with American airlines? I, um, <laughs> it's interesting, you know, I, um, one of one of my the way I deal with and I have to do this a fair amount because I have what I call my two dads, my father in law and my dad, mm -hmm. who are both dads, 89 and my father in law's 94 and both are pretty good health, but they need a lot of help with service providers, and which means getting on the phone with people. And so my <laughs> policy is to understand that they're on the front line and to treat them well. Mm hmm. Um, right. But some of the experiences lately, I, I mean, I just feel like people are just so understaffed and overworked. And um, I was so proud of myself two weeks ago. I made a mistake when I was making my airline reservation. So I sent a fax to American Airlines, very detailed with my record locator and everything so that someone could pick that up in customer service and see exactly what they needed to do and just take care of it. So this morning mm. I had an email from them telling me to call them. It's like <laughs> there was just a hurricane. I'm going to be on hold for like 40 hours. Right. And, and right. it is such a challenge to provide that level of service. And yet what you're saying, Melinda, it's the differentiator. If you treat me well, I'm your customer for life mm. because mm -hmm. I am subject. I am. I find myself oftentimes on lines where people haven't been trained yet or they're just learning and I know they are. So I try to have the patience, but um, yeah, it's a real challenge. And, and you as a small business, anybody out there who's got a small business service will make the difference. It'll it's make so, a huge it's difference. It's so true. You know, and, and I want to ask you as it sounds like it was sort of like trial by fire a little bit for you. It sounds like, and I know for me, like I started waiting tables, and I just was a people person. So I learned a lot of things, I think instinctually, but I'm just curious, like, did you realize, oh, I have to connect with this angry customer? Like, did, did you have training for that? Or was that like some instinctual thing that mm -hmm. kicked in for you? Cause you were like a brand new college graduate. Mm -hmm. I'm always curious about how much is learned mm -hmm. and how much of it is like instinctual. Mm -hmm. Right, right. A little bit was formal instruction. A little bit was, but because I it was an insurance company, we most of the training was the the heart 
of of insurance because we were not only customer service representatives, but we were actual insurance agents. So we were like underwriters. So a lot of the a lot of it was very intense training and 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 testing. So a lot of it I had to learn through trial and error. And just getting hands-on feedback from my coaches and my supervisor. So it would it would be like a pol- policyholder would come on the phone and say, hey, my policy went up by $1,000 a year. Why? I want to cancel. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, do you mind if I place you on hold? And I'm like, okay, what do I do? So a <laughs> lot of it was getting that, <laughs> that hands-on training. But then you just learn uh, to, to really help to to understand that they're a person and and getting up taking it not taking it personal i think that was the the key not taking it personal and one thing that's always helped me is that if if it were someone that were were dear to me on the phone someone that i highly respected how would i treat them and that that's the same way that you want to treat your customers because they are in, in a sense, investors in your business. <laughs> and they if, they don't, yeah. if they don't patronize your business, then you're not going to have the type of business that you want. So, and, and it's just like, just, just thinking of that. So a lot of it was, was just trial and error and, and just learning because I, a few times I did fail, I, you know, and, and sometimes you get caught off guard, but I had to learn like, this is the, these are our customers and they're paying their hard earned money and they're expecting a service. They invested in us because they're expecting us to do something to solve a problem. So the last thing they want to do is call us or, or reach out to us and us not give them that ideal service and, and make things an unexpected um, experience for them. So I think just valuing and thinking of that value of, of customers really helped me. In, and I think, you know, you're yeah. just talking about something so important that it can be really hard to carry out, especially just in regular life, which is um, giving people the benefit of the doubt. Um, it's it's sometimes a challenge to do that in these very sort mm-hmm. of turbulent times to give somebody the mm-hmm. benefit of the doubt. But it also creates a space to just let that person be and I think it's also key to what you're talking about in terms of client relationships. It's just you immediately when that person calls, you know they're a client, they're invested in the business, and you understand that they're the reason that you're there. Um, And you also have a culture that did you learn directly from the gecko? Or do you ever get to meet the gecko? Or... um, (laughs) Sorry, it was it, it was there. He, I had to ask. Does he always does he always have that sexy accent, or is that come and go? Like I'm always like, tell me about the accent, buddy. No, we we never got to meet the gecko. I think he was just very you know high in demand, and he never got to come to our <laughs> about, our uh, region. Warren, I don't know why. What about but, Warren yeah. Did you get to have a lunch with Warren no. Buffett? Damn. No, that would be no, cool. and he. No, I th- I think. Maybe some people said they, because he was very, he's very humble. So it's, he never had like, you know, fancy car, he ne- you know, so no, we never got to meet Warren Buffett, but we did have a picture of him on our website. <laughs> <laughs> Is he with the gecko? No, I'm just kidding. I love it. I love it. No, I think, uh, you know, one of the things when I first met you, Melinda, you were talking about, um, you know, building lasting relationships versus the transactional and I, you know, mm-hmm. and I just want to share, like, for anybody who's listening, if you're new in business, um, this is a process. So, you know, my whole life, I was like, tell a joke, get a laugh or not, right? <laughs> and go to go give a speech, get a check, um, you know, mm-hmm. serve a steak, get tips. And I was, that's just <laughs> how my most of my life had been. I mean, and I was always coaching part time and stuff, but when I first, you know, went all in with my business and people kept saying about building relationships and I was like, what does that even mean? Like I just, you know, and I Mm -hmm. honestly, I feel like I'm still learning that. So, Mm -hmm. you know, how to build long-term relationships and, you know, um, and thinking of it, it's so much longer than just like, okay, you hire me for a month or whatever, you know? And so are there some tips? I mean, both of you, I think are so good at building relationships. If there's somebody who's like new or struggling, 
like I was, Mm -hmm. you know, do you have, what, what's one of your top tips for that? I would love to hear from Mm -hmm. both of you. Right. Right. Well, I would say, and this is how I learned with, with my clients, servicing my clients. And even like one of my old managers, I was uh, a a manager for uh, one of the customer service teams. And I said, well, I want to help the reps with, with this. I want to help them with that, but I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what to do. And she was, she said, just ask, just ask them oh, yeah. what they, what they need and what they want. I said, huh, oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was oh like, God. that's, 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 that's obvious. So I would say the key is to ask, like when I onboard my clients, I give them, I send them like a get to know you questionnaire where I ask them their goals, like what their life goals are, ask them like what favorite snack they like, like just, just little, you know, not too personal, but just, just to get to know a little bit about them. And, and there, I even have like an open-ended question to say, is there anything else you would like to share? And one of my clients said, yes, I'm a, I'm a mom of two. I have a husband and I have one stepchild. And, you know, so it was like really nice to hear that background. So I, I think for one, that, that helps, like just really getting to know your clientele a little bit more before you even start to service them, because that way it'll just allow you to open up that door to, to, to have a little bit more uh, of that, of that informal relationship, but as well, but then just for them to hear that you're asking them helps and, and even asking what their challenges are, uh, what, 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 what they would like to see more of what, what are their preferences? Because then you're able to customize that service for them and they feel like, okay, they know me. And then it's not like trial and error. Like for example, one of my clients, I, uh, set her up for Dropbox. And we had some issues because she was like, oh, I hate, you know, I don't want to have to give my email and give this and give that and give that. So I was like, oh, so then we had to go back and I had to give her a different way of sharing my documents. So now I know in the future, let me, um, you know, ask what your technical preference is. Do you prefer Google Docs or or Dropbox or, you know, um, or just sending emails so that early on you already know their style and then you're not doing so much like picking up. And I think just starting that early on Being proactive, where, with that yeah. first step, just help to like start that relationship. It's like dating, right? <laughs> it's like, you just don't say, Hey, you want to be my boyfriend or be a girlfriend? You're like, okay, no, it's like, <laughs> what? you, not, you go on dates. That's not how you do it. I, <laughs> I was like, like, hey, be my girlfriend. I like you and you like me. Let's get it on. Like, <laughs> right. I know we did that as kids, right? The boy that liked you sent you a little picture and said, you want to be my girlfriend? Check yes or no. I, <laughs> you know, still, but... <laughs> Melinda, I still do that. So I don't know what you're hey, saying. <laughs> what, whatever works. If, if it's been working for you no, it hasn't. for these past, you know, 25 years, then no, continue. It, it hasn't. Yeah. I have a joke that I'm, I'm like, is he the one? Is he the one? I don't know. Oh my God, he's the one. <laughs> And then they run away. So I, yeah. I, right, I right. So, <laughs> right, right. So it's like before de- before you say yes, you're going to be my boyfriend or you're going to be my girlfriend, you you get to know each other a little bit. So you, I think that really helps. Then when you're in that, that committed stage, you already know their likes and dislikes, their pet peeves, their do's, their don'ts, their styles. And then it helps the relationship to be more successful. And That's yeah. That's so and awesome. So, awesome. It's just a great, it's a great example of, also what we do and when we're nurturing our businesses and growing our businesses Mm -hmm. it's the trial and error or the the trial and important information we'll call it instead of error you know you realize oh this person isn't comfortable with this so let's do that and then maybe you add it to your intake form what's your well how do you prefer to be communicated with do you like text do you like email those kinds of things (laughs) so many ways right there are, well, there are, there really are. And, um, you know, uh, yeah. So we want to be able to give people that opportunity to, to do that. But I love how right. you're talking about just making that discovery. And then we learn from that discovery. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and the other thing that I would add too is as a coach is, um, asking so that, you know, um, and then acknowledging You know, and I'm sure Mm -hmm. that's something we all do. You do that, Elaine, Melinda, I know you do that. That's, it's the, a lot of times people don't think they've started. They don't see the efforts that they've made. And it's helpful Mm. to just say, you know, you're already doing this, right? That even just Mm. by reaching out, you're, you're saying, I'm, I'm willing to look at myself, to give this a try and, and maybe learn something different. 
And a lot of people are really surprised when you just say, you know, you've already put some things in motion because we're sort of very goal oriented. Hire a coach. OK, you get a coach. Then you think you're doing something starting from when you hire a coach. But there's a whole decision process to actually reach out to somebody for uh, assistance and support. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah. That's that, a that's, great, yeah. great, great point. OK, I, ha- I want to you know me. I always want to bring the fun. So I think we should each, I think we should each, now this serious stuff is great, but I, I want to know, and I'll start it off. The, one of the most embarrassing experiences giving somebody customer service or that you received. So, uh, so when I was working my way through college, I was 19 and I worked at Chili's and I had always you know, I had waited tables in the past, but it was like for fun money. And when I was 19, I had to like start supporting myself. So it was a whole nother, you know, the stakes were much higher. Right. And, and Chewy Chili's used to have this big taco salad and this big glass bowl. And it had like taco meat and guacamole and sour cream. And I accidentally flipped it upside down and it landed in a man's lap. Oh boy. Like, the whole, it didn't just like, I don't know how I wow. did it, but the whole <laughs> taco salad, which was just like a huge goulash mess ended up in his oh my gosh. crotch. And it was like in the middle of the day and he had to go back to work. Oh so that my. Was, that was one of my most embarrassing uh, faux pas and I obviously I think we comped his thing and I'm I'm sure I got in trouble or something but I remember just being absolutely mortified for him and by myself so do you guys have um, anything with that was com- would compare to yeah. taco salad in the crotch <laughs> wow well first I want I just I'm, I'm curious like oh <laughs> uh, how how did you like um, rectify the situation like was was he like, like, what was his reaction? He was very upset, and I think we comped the meal. And, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, just, just an aside, like, so fast forward a million years later, I was um, at a steakhouse in the city that was super high volume, but very, very crazy. Like, we were running around with 500-degree mm-hmm. plates and steak knives, mm-hmm. and so there were accidents that happened a lot. So we were, you know, Mm -hmm. almost every night we were having to comp something because somebody got bumped or like one time I was opening champagne and this bartender pushed me out of her way. She didn't see what I was doing. And the champagne like spurted all over the place. And, you know, and I was more frustrated with her anyway. So we had to like comp meals and yeah, I mean, there was Mm -hmm. always stuff happening. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I mean, wow. I, I, and yeah. as a, you know, I was one of the top waiters there and I would always say, you know, I am so sorry this happened and I would do everything in my power to show remorse and try to turn it around. And 99% mm-hmm. of the time people, if they know that you care and that you feel bad and you're going to make an effort to do something to compensate, mm-hmm. they would leave happy. And then, you know, there's right. always a certain percent, like you could do cartwheels and levitate and they're still not going to be happy. Right. So, Mm -hmm. um, right. Right. But I just, you know, (laughs) I I remember just being so mortified many times and, uh, you know, so I just thought I would love to hear if you have a story. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that just goes to show whatever, no matter how big the mess is, (laughs) you can always clean it up with the great service. Well, I mean, like embarrassing, like, okay. So one with my last job, uh, although I'm the engagement manager, it, there's times I still get on the phone with, with the patients that use the, the, the technology that we have. So um, pretty much it's, it's, a, it's a smart bottle that helps them remind them to take medication. So a lot of the patients don't have, depending on their type of medic, the med- medication they have, they don't take the medication every day. Sometimes they take it for a certain cycle. So they'll take it for, let's say, 20 days, and then they'll be off for 10 days just to give time, their body time, and get it, get testing. So I was calling a patient, <clears throat> excuse me, I was calling a patient, 
And I was verifying his cycle because sometimes they may skip a few days. So their cycle may be off. And it's important for us because we want to make sure that they're getting the reminders sure. on the on the right days because we don't want it to cause confusion. We don't want to give them that bad experience. So I was calling him and I, <laughs> and you could tell he was a little old school. And, and <laughs> I said, well, how many days <laughs> I said, um, you know, what day is your next day of your off cycle? Um, and he said, ma'am, I'm a man. <laughs> and I said, and I, so he was offended because he thought, and you know, this is a, this is a medic medical bottle. So, People do share sometimes medical information. So I guess he thought I was really asking him when his <laughs> next cycle is, his next menstrual female cycle. And I <laughs> and I didn't want to laugh because I didn't want him to think that I was being disrespectful. So I had to <laughs> hold myself back and just take a pause and a breath. And I said... I said, okay, I'm sorry, sir. I said, no, I'm not referring. Yes, I, I, I recognize that you're a male. <laughs> I was referring to your medical, your, your cycle for the medication that you take. So there was a couple of lessons like, you know, not, you know, depending on the way you communicate is important because sometimes people could get confused. And then it's understanding that if someone does misunderstand, you don't want them to feel uncomfortable or make them feel like silly or, you know, like, well, duh, you know, I'm, I'm talking about your, your medication cycle. I know you're not a, you know? so I had to go with the flow and just, you know, not, you know, make light of it and not, you know, make it an uncomfortable conversation. That's so, funny. That's so, hilarious. I love that. So, what about you, Kathy? Do you have a story? Well, <laughs> guacamole, have... guacamole. Gua oh yeah. <laughs> I, that was when I knew I couldn't do improv anymore. When we were hired by Jordan's furniture to, um, squat underneath um, <laughs> appetizer table and pop up under bowls of oh guacamole my and, and crack go, guacamole, jokes. Guacamole, guacamole. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of the end. But I was thinking of the story with my grandmother. My grandmother, grandfather, and, and great aunt were in a car accident. And this was on Memorial Day weekend many years ago, and they were rushed to the hospital. And um, fortunately, everybody ended up being okay. But my grandmother did need to stay in the ER for a little while. And while one of the young interns was doing an intake, all of a sudden, I, I didn't know this was happening, but I was in the waiting area because I arrived to the hospital and I heard all this laughter. And the young intern asked my grandmother if there was any chance she could be pregnant. And she said, <laughs> now, mind you, my grandmother was married to my grandfather, who was a doctor, and she herself mm. knew a ton about medicine. And so... <laughs> He said, is there any chance you could be pregnant? And she said, yes. And he said, why? She said, I can't remember the last time I had my period. <laughs> <laughs> but fortunately, she had a sense of humor about that. But it, but it really is, you know, sometimes you have to ask these questions. I just feel so badly for people who have to go through a roster of questions mm. that doesn't allow them in, in the moment to sort of, you know, pivot a little bit and just refocus on who they're actually talking to. Mm -hmm. um, and then my other story is just hugely embarrassing. And, and this is just to tell you, you can survive. A good friend of mine had hired me to uh, do some training for this great organization in, um, in New York City. And um, it was kind of like a, an after school organization and they helped, they helped people um, start businesses, uh, it was involved in athletics, it was just a whole curriculum um, so that there was structure after school for kids. And mm. it was very hurried the way we would pull things together beforehand because, you know, he'd get short notice on the training that would need to happen and then we'd have to show up. So my very first time, I show up there and I'm in a room full of people and um, I start to teach. And um, my entire audience was African-American and there's rumbling, like people are just sort of like, uh, and I, I immediately cued into it and I said, is everything okay? Am I teaching stuff that you already know? I had the most sophisticated group of people and I didn't know it, you know, so we were teaching on three different levels. And so very quickly, I just said, am I one oh one ing you to death? And Every mm -hmm. head in the room just did that. And um, and so I apologized profusely. 
And then I said, what would be most instructive? How can we make best use of this time so that you're getting the most out of this? And it was, I, I was mortified because the last thing I ever want to do is talk down to anybody or in, in any way, shape or form. And this was probably like my worst case scenario. But, and they did send in somebody like while we had, so we broke up into groups and people started talking about what it is they wanted to do. And I went to each group, apologized again, and then we just went through what we were trying to accomplish for that session. And um, it was a hell of a learning experience in front of a room, my very first class. And then mm. I went back to train several different times and I survived. And it was important to be humbled, to listen, you know, thank God I had improv experience so I could read the room. I knew something was wrong and I, but I mm. didn't know what it was. Um, so that was, a, that was, a, that's not so funny. Um, but it is, a, it is a case <laughs> of, <laughs> it is a case of understanding and then very quickly doing the very best you can to address the situation mm -hmm. with respect, with clarity. And it's how you handle the situation. Even yeah. though inside, mm -hmm. I just wanted to crawl under a desk. Read the room, baby. Right. Read the Read room. Read the room, baby. Right, right. So and it, and it's so true. Yeah, that that's so true. I, I think a lot of people, you know, have certain experiences with businesses where they may not get that ideal experience because people are, you know, making uh, prejudgments or assumptions about them. So it, it's it's so important that you just take like you say um you know give everyone a benefit of the doubt meet everyone where they are right and, and just provide a universal experience regardless of because as humans we all have our prejudgments we all look at someone and say oh maybe this or maybe that it, that's right it's, it's human but we have to you know no no matter what you give everyone the same you know that same experience so. yes i, I had that. um, not cake that day mm -hmm. but i ate a big slice of <laughs> humble pie Right. And I was very grateful for the experience and I'm grateful that they hired me back. Yeah. Well, that shows mm -hmm. that you were able to like shift gears. Hello. You know, mm -hmm. um, right. I love mm -hmm. that saying, like, make sure the words you say are sweet because so often we have to eat them. Right. Or something, you know, like that. So um, I would love to know, like, what's a trend you guys are seeing with your clients right now? You know, we're we're at the end of summer. We thought we were coming mm -hmm. out of COVID. Now we're like, eh, there's all this crazy stuff mm -hmm. happening. Um, you know, is there some trend you're seeing? And, you know, what's, no pressure, but can you fix all of the society problems right now, Melinda? Go. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would, be, I would be running for it. No, no, no. Um, but I could give you some recommendations on foods and, and music and stuff. <laughs> um, I mean, what I, what I'm seeing is just with trends, especially amongst clients is there's a lot of like rush to get and, and pressure to get new clients. Like, I think that's always been the business model of coaches and consultants is leads, 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 lead generation, lead generation, lead generation, get new leads, get new leads. So it's, it's a lot of, um, focus on that. And I think it's stressing some clients out because they feel like they may not be succeeding because they're not getting new clients and they're spending a lot of the time and, and effort and it could be stressful. Um, and that, that's what I'm seeing as, as far as like, I have to get new clients. And like you say, with the economy, they may be having a challenge getting new clients because a lot of people might be thinking, Oh, let me close my wallets. But that's not always the case. It's, there's always a, an opportunity, but I think it's the, the mindset of, of thinking like are clients going to, am I going to get new clients? Um, because of everything going on in, in, in the economy. Oh, but, that's a great point. Yeah, yeah. mindset is mm -hmm. so important. What about you, Kathy? What are you seeing with your finger on the pulse? Well, um, I think that with uh, the people in the workplace, a lot of them, they keep using words like tsunami, the great resignation, none of which is materialized. Mm -hmm. But what is happening now is people are rethinking you know, they're at a different decision point. They're looking at, is it worth it for me to negotiate at this particular job? I love, you know, the clash said it best. Do I stay or do I go? Do I go? <laughs> um, mm. You know, and I think there are a lot of people at a decision point like that. And, um, and 
and and that is the challenge for coaches is to sort of meet them where they are and um and help them with that um and and we do have you know it's it's so true what happens is in in the world you'll start to hear a meme or a theme or a trope about something and you can kind of just start to repeat it as though it's true and the fact is that mm. even during the toughest times people hired it's a lot of it comes back to what you know melinda so beautifully expressed in the beginning it's your relationships it's who you know people work with people they like know and trust right and so the relationships that you develop the way you develop those relationships that's going to make all the difference in the world um, regardless of conditions in the rest of the world mm -hmm. you know it really right. is the way you nurture and care for the relationships you have wow great that's so beautifully yep. said love it love yeah. it love it okay one more question i think so um and this is selfish so what do you do when you have been like giving and you know putting yourself out there and then you, you ever have days where you just feel rejected or depleted and you're just like ah how do you bring yourself back what is a what do you do? How do you shake it off if you have you have a rough conversation or you get an email from somebody that's disturbing? What is, any mm -hmm. any magic tricks? What's the magic mm -hmm. pill that you take? <laughs> <sighs> um, avoidance. I'm gonna go first, Kathy. No, <laughs> avoidance. Avoidance. Um, oh, ostrich. crawling up. Crawling under the bed. Crawling under um, the bed. Okay. <laughs> curling up in a ball. In um, the fetal position. Okay, good. Okay, good. Well, I, you know, some of it is just taking a pause. And again, I think going back to the wise words of Melinda, don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. You know, we just don't know where someone's coming from and how we might have whatever we said might have hit them at a particular moment. And to just take a breath and take a pause and create enough space so that you can respond if a response is called for. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Take a pause, take a break. <laughs> what do you do? Right, what do right. you do? Right. Well, I agree with Kathy. First, you want to take a pause and take a break. And the name of this podcast is Still Human. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> oh, allow it oh, your, uh, yes, I saw it on the, I think it is. What, <laughs> and, and it's like, we have to allow ourselves, <laughs> allow ourselves to be human. Like, we, it's part of humanity. Like you learn from your failures. So it's like, if you weren't satisfied with the outcome, allow yourself to say, it's okay. So even if you want to scream for a moment, if you want to just go for a walk, or if you just want to, you know, watch a TV show or just, just whatever it is to release and just say, okay, I'm not happy with the situation, but then, but then ask yourself, like what I do is I say, okay, what, 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 can I learn from this? I wasn't satisfied with this outcome, but what can I learn from this? What, what went well, what didn't go well? And, and what do I want to do next time around? So I, I think the key is just allowing that moment of reflection, but then not letting it stop you. Um, not letting it, not letting that, you know, that experience and say, no, I, I want to avoid that. Like if you had a speaking engagement and you're like, Oh, I bombed, you know, don't let it deter you. It's like one time I had got into a car accident and um, my boyfriend at the time said, you know, do you want me to drive home? And I said, no, because if I never get in, if I don't get in the car today, I don't know if I'm going to get in the car right. again. Okay, so, get back on that horse. I, <laughs> so I said, I was, I was shocked and like, what is going on? Because the person came out of nowhere and it wasn't even my fault. It was like, whoa, but I said, I have to get back in this car. So I think, you know, the key is to acknowledge, you know, but get back in that car. So... Love it. Beautiful. Love it. Love it. Well, it's Elaine. been so much fun. Oh, it has an Thank Elaine. You. I, I enjoyed, <laughs> you know, I, I want to know what's happening with visibility on camera and confidence on camera, because maybe some people want to have a fit, but they want to look really good on camera while they're doing it. Mm. Um, how are things in your world these days? Well, uh, thank you for asking. I'm I'm actually, it's so exciting. I am taking a group of pranic healers through my Captivate the Crowd program. So mm -hmm. I am learning so much about pranic healing and they're like doing all this clearing work on me. I'm like, use me, baby, practice, you know. So, <laughs> so that's really fun 
to help them with their stories and getting comfortable and speaking their introductions. And, you know, I, I just love helping people who are, you know, maybe intimidated or in the past who've suffered when it comes to video or, you know, speaking. So um, that's, you know, I started this group program. We're, we're just a few weeks in, but I'm, I'm hoping to start another one. My intention is to start another one in September. And then of course I still have my, accountability groups and my VIP. So I'm having a lot of fun and I'm doing comedy again um, in Red Bank <laughs> live to um, for a benefit to raise money for this beautiful house that needs some refurbishing. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm excited. I've got some, some cool things coming up. So thanks for asking, you know, and I'm gonna, awesome. you know, I'm, my goal is to be cautious, but not crazy when it comes to, you know, COVID. Um, and, um, you know, I'm just uh, grateful to have the opportunity to contribute to people. I, you know, it's my greatest joy helping people find their voice. Mm. So um, mm -hmm. thanks for asking so much. Oh, and I have a new quiz. I'm so excited called, Are You Camera Ready? Are mm -hmm. you? There's no, it's incorrect grammar. It's the word. I the, took it. The letter R and the letter U. <laughs> yes. And so it's a great place it's to start. Fun. If anybody's listening and they're like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. This is a great place to start. So thanks so much for asking. And Melinda, I would love to, if people want to know more about customer experience, they know they need mm -hmm. you or they just want to talk to you. What's the best way mm -hmm. for people to find you? Right, right. Well, if you are looking, because as you know, like, but the podcast still human and we have to have that work life balance. And if you're looking for to if you're looking for a way to increase your income in your business with not only depending on new clients, but just giving your current clients or even past clients a little more attention and, and reigniting those relationships so that you can get renewals and even great referrals. Um, I offer a 15 minute uh, discovery session, which I like to call the, the discovery uh, to the secret gold mine uh, that a lot of successful businesses are missing, where you could see the money that you may be leaving on the table mm. by not um, taking advantage of your clients that are already in front of you or even your previous clients that maybe you haven't spoken to or reached out to in a long time. So um, my my web my web address is above the lead so that's a b o v e t h e l e a d dot com and it's forward slash the gold mine so that's above the lead dot com Ooh. forward slash the gold mine so you can go on that or if you go on my website you will have i'm sorry it's the secret gold mine just not the gold mine but it's the secret gold mine or you can go on my website because i know that's a, a handful and you can just click on the link discover the secret gold mine session and within those 15 minutes i will help you to discover the amount of money that you're leaving on the table with your current clients what your current client lifetime value is which i like to call the profit booster so mm -hmm. if you reach out to me i will have that conversation and i will give you one solution that you can start right now to to start focusing on your current clients and growing your business. That's Very incredible cool. value. Beautiful. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds golden. But I'm bummed. <laughs> it is golden. <laughs> and, and then Pat, Kathy Keegan, you know, amazing, extraordinary coach and speaker. Um, how can people, if they're like, should I stay? Should I go? How do they get a hold of you? <laughs> Um, you know, right now, um, my website's under construction after I um, put posted a picture of me that is so large, I, I just couldn't get it smaller. And I knew now that I needed to hire somebody to help me with my <laughs> website. Um, it's bio an unusually large photo of Kathy, um, which is how I've dealt with it now, humor. But um, Kathy <laughs> at KathyKeegan.com, send me an email and let's get together and chat and talk about where you are, especially folks who are at this decision point in the workplace right now, who really feel mm -hmm. like they're at a crossroads and they feel like they have a lot of stakeholders, responsibilities. Maybe they manage a team, they have family, they have friends. And so there's a lot riding on the decision that you make around your career. Send me an email, Kathy with a K at KathyKeegan.com. And Elaine, voila, captivate the crowd. 
captivate the crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have it. Yes. You know, I have this really cool <laughs> are you camera ready? And I also have confidence on camera checklist. So, you know, e- even if you've done video and you're struggling or you know it's time and you want to rally and finish this be your strong, you know, reach out. And um, yeah, well, thanks so much for listening and watching everybody. This has been such a fun, fun time. Melinda, thanks so much for joining. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And Kathy, yes. as always, fun, fun, fun. Yes. Thanks and for having me. <laughs> yeah. I hope you had fun. Yeah. We always yeah, try a lot to of have fun. fun. Impart some pearls of wisdom and encourage laughter because, you know, laughter raises your serotonin, releases toxins, mm-hmm. burns calories. And who doesn't love that? Right. So mm-hmm. awesome. All right. Beautiful. Well, stay human, everybody. Yes. Thank yes. you. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you for listening. Bye. Bye.